Hi, and welcome to Mosin History. I'm Linda Shenton Matchett, author, speaker, and history geek. Research is one of my favorite aspects of writing, but for many reasons, lots of the information that I unearth does not end up in my books. So I've created this channel so that I can share some of the more intriguing details. As you can see from my outfit, we'll be visiting World War II today, specifically the Japanese balloon bombs. Many Americans are under the mistaken impression that there were no Japanese incursions on the United States mainland soil during the war. However, between November of 1944 and April of 1945, the Japanese military launched more than 9,000 pilotless weapons in an operation codenamed Fugo. Most of the balloons fell harmlessly into the Pacific Ocean, but more than 300 of these low-tech white orbs made the 5,000-mile crossing and were spotted fluttering in the skies over the western United States and Canada, from Holy Cross, Alaska, to Nogales, Arizona, and even as far west as Grand Rapids, Michigan. In March 1945, one balloon even hit a high-tension wire and caused a temporary blackout at the Hanford, Washington plant that was producing plutonium that would be used on the atomic bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki five months later. Since the 13th century, when a pair of cyclones foiled the fleets of Kublai Khan's Mughal empires, invaders, the Japanese had long believed that the gods had dispatched divine winds, they called kamikaze, to protect them. During World War II, the military thought the winds could save them once again since its scientists had discovered that a westerly river of air 30,000 feet high, known as the jet stream, could transport, transport balloons filled with 19,000 cubic feet of hydrogen to North America in three to four days. The idea being to drop them there to kill people, destroy buildings, and start fires. The Japanese designed two different balloons. The first was called the Type B balloon and was designed by the Japanese Navy. It was 30 feet in diameter and consisted of rubberized silk. The Type B balloons were sent first and mainly for meteorological purposes. The Japanese used them to determine the possibility of the bomb carrying balloons reaching the United States. The second type was the bomb carrying balloons. Their launch sites were located on the east coast of the main Japanese island of Honshu. For two years, the Japanese military produced thousands of balloons with skins of lightweight but durable paper made from mulberry wood that was stitched together by conscripted schoolgirls oblivious to their sinister purposes. Using 40-foot long ropes, incendiary devices, and 30-pound 30 30 explosive bombs, were mounted to the balloons. The Japanese fire balloon was the first ever weapon possessing intercontinental range and at the time were the longest ranged attacks ever conducted in the history of warfare. A record not broken until the 1982 Operation Black Buck Raids during the Falkland Island Wars. Preparations were lengthy because the technological problems were acute. A hydrogen balloon expands when warmed by sunlight and rises. Then it contracts when cooled at night and descends. The engineers devised a control system driven by an altimeter to discard ballast. So when the balloon descended below the 30,000 foot level, it electrically fired a charge to cut loose sandbags. The sandbags were carried on cast aluminum four spoke wheels and discarded two at a time in order to keep the wheel balanced. Similarly, when the balloon rose above 38,000 feet, the altimeter activated a valve to vent the hydrogen. It was also vented if the balloon's pressure reached a critical level. The control system ran the balloon through three days of flight. By that time, it was likely over the United States and its ballast was expended. The final flash of gunpowder released the bombs also carried on the wheel, and lit a 64-foot long fuse that hung from the balloon's equator. After 84 minutes, the fuse fired a flash bomb that destroyed the balloon, 
and exploded. The balloon had to carry about a thousand pounds of gear. Ultimately, Fugo was considered a military failure. Japan released the first of these bomb-bearing balloons on November 3rd, 1944, and the last one in April 1945. As mentioned before, few balloons reached their targets, and the jet streams were only powerful enough in wintertime when snowy and damp conditions in North America forest precluded the ignition of forest fires. However, citing the need to prevent panic and avoid giving the enemy location information that could allow them to hone their targeting, the U.S. military censored reports about these Japanese balloon bombs, which unfortunately resulted in the death of five children and a pregnant woman in April of 1945 in Bly, Oregon, when the victims found and touched the balloon, thus causing it to explode. What military investigators sent to the blast scene immediately knew, but didn't want anyone else to know, was that the strange contraption was one of these high-altitude balloon bombs launched by Japan to attack North America. The Army Air Force had been defending against these balloon bombs in the Firefly Project, an organization of approximately 2,700 troops, including 200 paratroopers of the 555th Parachute Infantry Battalion. These men were stationed at critical points for use in firefighting missions. Through Firefly, the military used the United States Forest Service as a proxy agent to combat Fugo. But due to limited wartime fire discretion personnel, Firefly had to rely on the 555th as well as uh, conscientious objectors. The operation also unified fire suppression communications among federal and state agencies. Although many Bly citizens knew the truth about the incident that killed the young family, they reluctantly followed military directed and adopted a code of silence about this tragedy. And the media reported that victims died in an explosion of undetermined origin. However, by the end of 1945, the military decided in the interest of public safety to reveal the true cause of the explosion and warn Americans to beware of any strange white balloons they might encounter. Information divulged a month too late for the victims in Oregon. Seventy years later, hundreds of potentially dangerous balloon bombs may still lurk in remote areas. In October of 2014, a pair of loggers in Lumbee, British Columbia, found the remnants of a balloon bomb that was destroyed in a controlled explosion before it could result in a tragedy that was repeated 70 years ago. Thank you for watching today's episode of Moments in History. If you enjoyed watching, be sure to subscribe so that you'll never miss another episode. And you'll want to click the bell icon, which, is, which will be notifying you of when I upload an installment the second and fourth Friday of each month. You can find me across social media on Facebook, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. And if you want even more history, stop by my blog, History, Mystery, and Faith, located at lindashentonmatchett.com. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time on Moments in History.